So we're gonna talk about wellness today. I do have some notes here in front of me, but this is more just to keep myself on track and relatively organized. But yeah, my wellness, you know, lifestyle plan is pretty basic and kind of revolves around four things. And no big surprise, sleep, exercise, eating well, and then just kind of keeping things in line in terms of, you know, relationships, family, friends, and just really nurturing those connections. And I think those connections can be different things to different people, you know, like spirituality, um, you know, just a personal practice, whether it's, you know, yoga, meditation, that connection, just a deeper connection with yourself, your, uh, like I said, spiritual practice, church, temple, whatever it is. But for me, you know, a lot of that does revolve around family and friends and just nurturing those connections um, so that you aren't just so, or I should speak for myself because I'm talking about myself and my wellness, um, that it's just not, you know, you just aren't, or for me, I'm just not in my head all the time. <clears throat> so let's talk about sleep first. And for me and my issue with sleep is going to bed, that's when my head starts to kind of spin. And I think a lot about just what I've done that day or what I need to do the next day, conversations I need to have, conversations I'm having with myself. So it's really just shutting down my brain and making those conversations stop. So what really helps me, and I mentioned this in a different video, is this Natural Calm. It's just a magnesium supplement. I've been taking this every night now, probably for two to three months. I really feel like this does help kind of calm me down. It doesn't knock me out. It just kind of takes things down a notch and allows me to settle just my body, my brain, and it kind of guides me into that mode of taking things down a notch. The other thing that has helped me a lot, and I put this on my, I think this was in my gift guide, is a sleeping mask. And there's something about, it's not only keeping things on, you know, obviously making things darker for yourself, but there is something about the weight of, you know, having something on my eyes. I don't know what it is, probably just psychological or something comforting, but just having that weight on my eyes also helps calm me, I find it really soothing. So the combination of these two things has really helped a lot with my sleep. The other thing that's helping a lot, and I know this is also really basic, people tell you this all the time, but it's to, I, I mean, I and I haven't had my phone in my room for a really long time, but not having your phone in your room uh, when you're going to sleep and then, you know, not to watch, you know, whatever TV or be on your computer right before sleep and then also reading. So right now I'm reading this book. It's a wonderful book, Madonna in a Fur Coat. I got this from the Box Wallop. So this was really lovely that Lavanya sent this to me. So just reading a book that isn't too, you know, um, activating for me is really important. So something that is kind of soothing to read is really helpful and I also find that this again takes my mind off whatever I might be stressing out about or worried about or just it doesn't even have to be a worry just again running through lists in my mind of things that I need to do so reading right before bed what I'll do is typically get in bed try to read uh, even if it's just a chapter or even just like five ten minutes and then I'll take the magnesium and you know just kind of have my little ritual and again that's something that's also really important is having a ritual so that just kind of signals to your brain that okay it's time to um, kind of shut things down and get ready for sleep so sleep really important for my wellness really important for everybody's wellness really good to have sleep hygiene and that could be uh, you know taking a bath for you again kind of that skincare ritual whatever it's going to signify or signal to your brain and your body that it's time to go to sleep super super important and then what's also really important uh, in helping me get a good night's sleep is exercise so i do try to exercise most every day um, you know probably five to six times a week i think it is important to have kind of a downtime just for your restoration for your muscles um, as you've probably heard me talk a lot about, I play a lot of tennis, so tennis is probably my biggest um, form of exercise. 
And then I also do either walk or jog. I mean, I call it jogging because I'm not a fast runner. I don't particularly love running, but it's just so easy. You know, you just put on your sneakers and then you're running out the door. So we also do have a treadmill which is great when the weather is really crappy. We've had it for a long time. We got it when our son was just born so that I could exercise with him in the house when he was you know, tiny and in a crib and I couldn't leave the house and go running. Um, but I really recommend, you know, if you're starting an exercise regimen, of course you need to consult with your doctor, but it is great to pick something that you think you will really, really enjoy. So I love tennis, I am addicted to it. So that makes it really easy to exercise. I don't consider it a chore at all, I absolutely love it. So it's good to pick something that you really, really love, whether you know it's dance or you know walking and getting out in nature, hiking, biking, whatever. Just, you know, it's great to pick something that you really love. And then what I also wanted to show you guys as a part of my wellness, because I always seems like there's something going on with my body because tennis actually is pretty hard on your body, especially if you play singles. Um, you might've heard me mention a while ago, two summers ago, I tore my plantar fascia. So in terms of maintenance, I'm taking really good care of the bottom of my feet. So I have all kinds of optimizing tools. So I use these balls to massage the plantar fascia on the bottom of my feet. I've got this roller. I got these from Amazon. I also have a foam roller that I use. So I'm always foam rolling something. My back, my calves. Um, I use this for my quads. Uh, it's great for quads for my IT band. So yeah, I, I highly recommend foam rolling. It is amazing for your body. I also have this guy here. I use this also for my calves. I can put this in my tennis bag, so it's really easy to carry around. Um, I use this, I think it's my tibialis is the muscle that's right on top of your shin. More optimizing here. I have struggled a little bit with mild, um, it's golfer's elbow, but of course I have it from tennis. So you can do an exercise like this to help with that. And so I'm supposed to do that for uh, prevention for the golfer's elbow. I also have a resistance band. So I'm always doing some kind of exercise so that mostly to either prevent more injuries, to be working on injuries or aches or pains that I have typically from tennis, sometimes from running. So I do a lot of stretching. I use these accessories or tools, whatever you want to call them, either for optimizing um, whatever, but yeah, that is a huge, huge part of my exercise wellness regimen. All right, so we covered sleep, we covered exercise, so moving into food and eating. I do my best to eat really well. I am lactose intolerant, so I don't eat dairy, or I should say I avoid it as best I can. Sometimes I'll eat a little bit here and there, especially if it is like a cheese that's really low in lactose, so I'll have some Parmesan. I do indulge every once in a while, like if we're gonna go to Salt and Straw, which is an amazing ice cream place here in Portland, I will take a couple of lactate. That doesn't always cut it either, so I'm very, very picky on when I do have dairy every once in a while. But for the most part, a typical day for me will be uh, oatmeal pretty much every day for breakfast with some Kite Hill, uh, that uh, cultured almond milk yogurt with maybe a little bit of agave syrup. If it's in the summer, I will definitely put berries on top of that. Lunch is typically, and I'm not gluten-free, I don't avoid gluten, um, and I do, but I, I love the Ezekiel bread, which I believe is maybe a little lower in gluten, although I'm not exactly sure, but I love the Ezekiel, Ezekiel bread. So usually for lunch, I'll have Ezekiel bread with something like either some eggs on that or hummus, or I don't know if you guys are familiar with Toby's tofu pate. It's made in Eugene, Oregon, I'm pretty sure. So it might just be kind of a West Coast thing. So some tofu, so some type of protein. And then if I do have some good avocado, I'll put some avocado on top of that. So that's typically lunch. And then dinner is like a grain. Uh, so my, maybe like rice or quinoa or couscous, something like that with a protein, which might be like a garbanzo bean stir fry or some like a lean meat like chicken or fish. 
and then either a salad or some kind of a vegetable. So that's typically, that's like the average day. And then there's usually a dark chocolate snack thrown in there somewhere. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really like everything in moderation type of gal. So, you know, there's probably thrown in there once or twice a night. We'll go out for dinner, you know, sushi, Thai food might do Mexican takeout every once in a while. So, you know, I am by no means like the epitome of the perfect, you know, organic eater all the time, 100% of the time. I try my best when we're shopping, you know, we try to eat, um, you know, organic when we go out, but I'm not gonna be that stickler who's not gonna eat something if it's not 100% organic. So we do our best on that front. But, you know, I definitely am, like I just said, try to do everything in moderation and try to live my life uh, without being too strict and um, too hyper worried about that kind of stuff. So that's just, that's how I am and it works for me. So as far as caffeine goes, I do like green tea. I drink matcha lattes with almond milk. In the summertime, I do enjoy a decaf uh, iced coffee. I like the decaf Americanos over ice, and I will use a little bit of half and half over that. I seem to tolerate that okay with one lactate. That does work for me okay. In terms of alcohol, I actually do avoid alcohol, and that is because I get migraines and they stay, knock on wood, they are under good control. I do take a daily medication for that. Uh, but um, alcohol is definitely a huge trigger for me. And I just, as an aside, I want to say, I do think that even if I didn't get migraines, I probably would avoid alcohol anyway. And this, I don't know, I don't wanna get like in too much of a touchy subject here, but I find this kind of interesting because for all the talk about, you know, parabens and the possible link to cancer, or there's a lot of people in the green community who just say outright that parabens cause cancer, which there actually has not been any proof yet that parabens cause cancer. And, you know, I definitely avoid parabens. I don't like to use anything that has parabens in it. Um, just because they're, the jury's still out about whether or not it causes cancer, whether or not parabens cause cancer, so I just feel like I'm just gonna avoid it. But there is definitely a link to um, alcohol and increased alcohol consumption and cancer, specifically breast cancer. So I just feel like why consume alcohol when there is that link between alcohol and an increase of cancers, especially um, breast cancer. So let me see if I can find the quote. Um, yeah, so here it is. I'm gonna need to whip out my glasses here, my readers. Um, so even those who drink moderately defined by the Centers for Disease Control as one drink daily for women and two for men face nearly a doubling of the risk for mouth and throat cancer and more than double the risk for squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus compared to non-drinkers. Moderate drinkers also face elevated risks for the cancers of, for cancers of the voice box, female breast cancer, and colorectal, colorectal cancers. So I will link this article below. So I'd, again, I am not into fear mongering. I don't wanna scare anybody. I think the basic, um, I think the basic guidelines in general are to minimize your alcohol consumption, and if you are not a drinker, don't start. So there's a lot of discussion about parabens being endocrine disruptors, meaning that they can increase the estrogen in your body, and alcohol. The thinking is that alcohol. Uh, may lead to cancer because the body metabolizes it into acetaldehyde, which causes changes and mutations in DNA. And then also the alcohol and the way it interacts with the liver also increases the estrogen in the body. So there's that clear link of the estrogen being increased by the alcohol when it's consumed. So if we already, if the fear is that the parabens might increase the estrogen, in your body, but we already know that alcohol does increase the estrogen in our body. It just seems like we should be more concerned about drinking alcohol than whether or not 
we're using parabens in our skincare. So I guess if it were me and somebody said, okay, either you have to drink a glass of wine every day or you have to use skincare with parabens in it, I would choose to use the skincare with parabens in it over drinking alcohol because I just think the evidence is more compelling that alcohol increases your risk for breast cancer and other types of cancer than um, skincare with parabens in it. So that's just a little side note there on the wellness discussion, but it just doesn't really seem like it gets talked about hardly at all in the green beauty community. And I know that that's kind of a little like the alcohol discussion is a side note, but there's like Instagram posts all the time about, oh, I'm drinking my wine, I'm gonna have my drink, da 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 da. And there's no concern or discussion about alcohol causing breast cancer, but yet somebody talks about using a product with parabens and everybody freaks out about it. So I just find that interesting, and I'm not saying I think I'm like any kind of a saint because I don't drink alcohol, because the big reason is because it causes migraines for me, but I just think it's just interesting. I'm just throwing it out there that I think that's just an interesting aspect of this green beauty community that we are in. Okay, so the other um, thing that I deal with is endometriosis. And for a long time, I did take um, Chinese herbs and so this is what it's, it came in a package like this. My acupuncturist uh, created my own fine-tuned herbal supplement for me. They're in like the granular form. This is what the granular is. Basically, you know, I like scooped it out, put it in warm water. I would take it, you know, three times a day. So in terms of supplements, I am not a big supplement person. I am not a big medication person. I am a firm believer, at least for myself, for sure, if not for most people, I think it's good to take the least amount of medications for sure. And then for myself, I at least extend that to supplements as well. I do not want to take anything that I do not need to take. So medications and supplements as well. So first of all, I just taking medications and also supplements just kind of makes me feel nauseous. I'm just not a big medication taker. I don't have a hard time taking pills, but I just, I just don't want to take something that I don't really need to take. But my endometriosis was just, as you can imagine, just not pleasant to deal with. I've had to have three surgeries for it. I don't want to go into the big gory details, but I definitely was willing to do whatever I needed to do to keep it at bay. So I do acupuncture once a month, if not more, but I do have a standing date with my acupuncturist um, to keep those issues at bay. And then for a long time, like I said, I did the Chinese herbs and I don't really need the herbs anymore. It seems like the getting just needled is enough. And I pretty much don't take any other supplements except for every once in a while when I feel, or not every once in a while, pretty regularly, I do take a probiotic and I do like this one from Flora, and it does need to be kept in the refrigerator. And I don't take this every single day. I would say maybe on average, I take it about three, four times a week, and I just try to stay attuned to what's in my diet. If my gut needs some help, <laughs> then I'm definitely gonna take this. I did need to take some antibiotics for a sinus infection, unfortunately, that I got. So then I definitely had this on board when that was going on, and then afterwards, so I just try to really think about what my body needs, what I might be lacking, but this is one that I do take. And then the only other supplement that I have on hand now is this uh, multivitamin from Rainbow Light. I really like Rainbow Light a lot. And again, so I don't really take this that regularly if I feel like I'm getting enough um, nutrition, you know, vitamins and minerals from my diet, then I don't really, feel like I need this multivitamin, but if I feel like it's lacking or I just, I haven't been eating as well as I should, then I will take a multivitamin. So that's, and that's kind of my general feeling with supplements that you should be getting your nutrition from your food. And if you feel like you're not, then maybe, you know, look into supplements. That's just how I feel personally. And I'm just not a big proponent of taking a whole lot of supplements. Now, I think that, um, you know, fish oil is great and um, 
that's probably one that I would look into for myself. I used to take them and then I just sort of weaned off again. It's just, I'm not super compliant with taking things every single day. I just don't really like to. Uh, it just kind of um, doesn't sit well with me. I, you know, again, that's just kind of like a personal thing for me. Uh, if I were to add something, it would be like an omega fatty acid type of supplement, like a fish oil. That would be really the only thing that I feel like I'm missing. The only other thing in terms of, you know, like if I do feel like I've been exposed to, you know, if I've been at a party or in a public area and I feel like people have been just like coughing all around me, there is an herb that I do like to take and it's called Lomation and I'll link that down below and a really good midwife, fellow midwife friend of mine who has studied herbs extensively and she was also a family nurse practitioner before, before she became a nurse midwife, she highly recommends Lomation. It's specifically supposed to help fight against uh, viruses when your body has been exposed to a virus. Now, when I and I, what, we were actually both at a party where we were being exposed to people coughing and it was just kind of, we were both like, oh my God, ah, and she was like, I gotta go get myself some Lomation. So when I was at New Seasons, I couldn't find specifically a tincture of just Lomation. So I got this called Kung Fu Fighter, which has Lomation in it. And so I was taking this really recently. Uh, to help protect myself from all that like coughing and nastiness that I was exposed to. And then the other thing that I like to do is I have been using, as you saw in my last haul, I got this Lulu Organic Sniffle Balm, which has the Thieves Oil blend in it. And then I also have some Thieves Oil by Lulu Organics. And I do believe they were forced to change their name from Thieves Oil because of that, what is that, that brand? Um, the young living, I guess they have a trademark on the thieves oil, but I guess there's some big controversy about whether or not they really should even be able to have the trademark on thieves oil. But now I think they call it the resistance oil, but I do, you know, put this in the diffuser and I do love to use this under my nose. Now it kind of gives me that, maybe it's a false sense of security, but it kind of feels like a security blanket. And then I will put some drops of the thieves oil just into some water and then just kind of, you know, spray it all over myself and just take in that scent. I'm not one of these people that takes, you know, huge stock in essential oils in terms of, you know, them being the cure all for everything under the sun. And I don't really, I don't ingest essential oils more than anything they they make me feel good and I like having them around and I like how they smell in the house and I, I do like having them you know like the thieves oil snuffle balm under my nose and they do give me a general feeling of wellness now I don't know if you know using them in the diffuser and putting the balm under my nose is you know definitely going to help ward off viruses but uh I like, I like having them around, let's just say that. So I think that really um, pretty much covers it all in terms of my, my feelings about wellness for myself. Again, this is all my own personal thoughts really for myself. This is not intended to be, you know, any kind of medical advice. So hopefully that comes through and I really don't want anything to be judgmental again about, I know I kind of went off on that like alcohol trip thing, but I just wanted to kind of open that up. That has been on my mind for a really long time. So I feel like this was the best video to actually express that. So I hope you all enjoy this discussion about wellness and sort of how it's integrated into my life. So I also want to say that I've been really, really lucky with my doctors here in Portland. Most of them have been incredibly open to me doing acupuncture and trying, you know, quote unquote alternative, um, you know, not like medications, but supplements. And I have never really felt that I needed to you know, move right into Western medications or Western modalities if I did not feel comfortable. And I don't know if that's because I'm also in the healthcare field, so I feel really comfortable advocating for myself and um, being a part of my 
sort of management plan and knowing when it's okay to say, wait a minute, I want to, I want to take a moment and, uh, maybe try something else. But I feel like it's really important to make sure that if whoever your provider is, whether it is a naturopath or somebody who or a Western, uh, Western medicine doctor that you feel like you are being heard. I have definitely gone to naturopaths and people who are in the alternative world and felt like I have been pressured to buy a whole bunch of supplements and that's not who I am. I do not want to do that. I'm not comfortable doing that and I did not like that feeling at all. And then I've also, you know, and I've been to Western doctors who want to run a bunch of tests that I didn't feel like were necessary or who have actually interestingly enough, tried to get me off of a medication, the one medication that I'm on for my migraines, and I did not feel like that was a good idea, and I just refused to go off of it, and I'm really glad that I refused to go off of it. So I think that um, a big part of wellness is knowing yourself and what's good for yourself, and also feeling like you can advocate for that, and I think that it can be really challenging to do that. So. Um, I think listening to your body, knowing your body, and um, advocating for yourself are also really, really important in this whole, you know, the grand scheme of wellness. And I think it is important to do your own research, but I also think that it's important to find those providers that you really trust and, and also listen to them as well. And um, in conjunction with doing your own research, because I think that doing online research can also um, only get you so far. <laughs> so I hope all of that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, um, I would love to answer them uh, down below. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. That would mean so much to me. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And I think my next video will probably be an empties video because I can't believe it. I've already gone through so many things. Uh, maybe combined with a little something special. So I will see you in that next one. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you next time. Bye.